Welcome back to Game Changers at The Ohio State University. We're here with Lonnie and Ellen Mosley-Thompson from the Bird Polar Research Center. And Lonnie, you've completed tropical ice exploration over five continents. Explain a typical drilling expedition. Well, it's, uh, it's different than uh, uh, in the polar regions mm -hmm. uh, in that we work in other countries so that when we, we go to these countries, generally there's not any logistics in place. Mm -hmm. And just to give you an example of what uh, would be involved if you were going to the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. If you uh, work in, in Tibet and in Himalayas, you have to move the equipment from Columbus to Beijing, China. And wow. in Beijing, you gotta do the customs clearance for uh, six tons of equipment. And then you gotta move it from there across China. And we do that with train. Uh, there's now a train that goes all the way from uh, Beijing to Lhasa. And then we uh, all fly to Lhasa. <laughs> where we mix, uh, meet up with, our, uh, with the equipment and we get the uh, land cruisers, the, uh, the vehicles we need to uh, move uh, into western China. And in order to, to do these projects, there's not really, you have to be totally self-contained. So you have to have the food, mm -hmm. you have to have the medicine, uh, you, you have to have uh, 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 equipment for, um, uh, uh, for people, as, uh, places to stay and, and if you're going to work at the top of the Himalayas it means you're going to have to put in about six different camps as you move people from the lower elevations up to the top of the, uh, of the mountain range and so it usually takes about a month to actually get everything set up and get uh, get into uh, the site and then once you're there you have to uh, drill the cores mm -hmm. And uh, you have to keep them frozen. So uh, in, in the Himalayas, we, we dig uh, chambers into the glacier, okay. and we store the cores until the whole project is finished. And mm -hmm. we usually drill some, something between 500 and 600 meters of ice core. So we're talking wow. many tons, of maybe four tons of ice that has to be moved plus the equipment. And so in that part of the world, we use yaks uh, to <laughs> transport. That's what they've been using for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. and. You can get about uh, six meters of core into one of these core boxes, and you can get two of these boxes on a yak, so about 12 meters. So if you're talking 500, 600 meters of core, you're talking about a herd of yaks uh, <laughs> right. to get down to the valley. And then uh, once we're uh, at the vehicles, we have to do a rush across the plateau to the nearest freezer, which is in Lhasa. And uh, that usually uh, takes a couple days, uh, driving day and night, uh, and then once we're in Lhasa, then we uh, air cargo the cores to Beijing, do the customs clearance in Beijing, and then fly it to Chicago, mm -hmm. and then truck it from Chicago down to the freezers at Ohio State. So usually the core is in, actually in transit for about a month after we, after we drill it. Okay, so we're trains, planes, automobiles, Sherpas, and yaks. And yaks, <laughs> right? and, and a lot of permits uh, <laughs> along the way. So. So quite a process it, then. It, it's quite a process, yes. Anything different, um, Ellen, in the polar regions, or is it this, the process similar? It's actually quite different mm -hmm. for the Antarctic, working in Antarctica mm -hmm. or working in Greenland. Uh, the drilling part, the core handling, the core storage, et cetera, all of that is the same. The big difference is that we have aircraft. Mm. And so this time last year, I was actually just leaving Antarctica after being there a little over two months. Mm. But um, I actually had the luxury of flying to a Punta Arenas, Chile mm -hmm. commercial, mm -hmm. then flying with the British Antarctic Survey to their base in the Antarctic Peninsula, okay. and then using ski-equipped uh, twin-engine aircraft to actually bring us up onto the place we were drilling, which right. was called the Bruce Plateau. So we got put in by planes. Essentially, every then we're just like Lonnie. We have to, everything we need, all of our tents, uh, food, et cetera, all has to be with us. And about how long are you actually there on, this, on site? Well, the project I completed last year, we were on site 42 days. I can tell you it was great to get a shower after 42 days. It's because <laughs> the conditions are very different. Yes, there Obviously. were six of yeah. us just living in tents. Even health-wise, uh, to take a mission like this, you first of all have to be able to take it. It's, uh, uh, it's not for everyone, okay. uh, and in fact, uh, uh, we usually, uh, when we take uh, 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 students, uh, their first time out, we go to a place where it's easy to get them back home. Mm -hmm. 
because you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it, mm -hmm. and there's not much in, in between. But the uh, uh, yeah, the physical demands of working above 20,000 feet are are significant. So now that's and that's just really the beginning of this research. Oh, After yes. that, you've got to get it back, as you said, and then once you get it here, what happens as far as storing it? and the actual research. Right. Well, portion. at Bird Polar, we have two very large freezers mm -hmm. that uh, keep the cores at minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. That's where the real work begins because we have to then begin to extract the, um, the stories that are preserved mm -hmm. and the histories that are preserved in these ice cores. And we measure such things as the dust concentration, various uh, chemical species, uh, and those tell us things like they, when we can look then back over time mm -hmm. and uh, discern when was it warm, when was it cold, what was the chemical composition of the atmosphere, do we see volcanic eruptions, when was the earth more dusty, maybe deserts, you know, it was a drier period. We can pick up all of that in these ice cores. Mm -hmm. They're just phenomenal recorders of their environment. Probably one of, the, one of the first things we have to do is put a time scale mm -hmm. on the records. And we use things like uh, the thermonuclear bomb test. All, all the uh, nuclear tests we've done in the atmosphere have left a radioactive layer okay. around uh, the Earth. Right. And we can measure that on any glacier. So one of the first things we do is to try and find the, the Ivy test uh, from 1951, uh, find the Soviet test in 62, 63. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they give us timelines in places where no one's ever been before, mm -hmm. and then suddenly we can we can uh, we can determine the accumulation rates in those areas. And I would say in, in the tropics, one of the things that uh, the ice offers is uh, that they're organics, uh, insects, mm -hmm. uh, things captured in the ice, and pollen. Uh, pollen from plants, uh, uh, so that you can look at how um, uh, vegetation has changed with climate in the past. Mm -hmm. And that gives you an indication of how it may change in the future with climate. And so uh, the, the, essentially the ice will archive anything that's in the atmosphere. It falls out, it's frozen in time. Um, the history of the composition of the atmosphere, uh, the only way we can get that uh, reproducibly is from uh, the ice cores and the bubbles mm -hmm. in the ice because they're just little capsules of atmosphere from the past. After the break, we'll comb through all of the ice core data to see just what this means for our planet when Game Changers returns. Mm -hmm.